Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you, but you're, you've got your headset on, so I, I guess you're tilted 90 degrees for me, so. Yes, you are. Oh, there he goes. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had your view. better. I thought this was an exercise in taking a different view of things. <laughs> Do you remember those old commercials for the V8 uh, vegetable juice? Yeah. You walk out, the person would walk out the door and everything would be crooked until they drank their V8 and, and they'd be standing up straight. <laughs> there you go. That's an oldie but a goodie. I wonder how many of those are lodged deep in my unconscious. <laughs> More than you care, you're willing or would care to admit. I would like to use the restroom before we go ahead. Yeah, All right. yeah. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Hell being a human being. <laughs> I looked around for a room here in the library again. Of course, there's nothing available. It's still under renovation, but so I'm hanging out in the, the teen department. Which seems to be the second time I've had to do that, but it's, it's, uh, it's well, pretty you have nice. A nice. There's a nice stained window background to to where you are. It, it's it's very, sort of gives you a, it gives you a halo effect. Uh, Doug. All right. <laughs> what I was going for. Yeah, okay. We have deserved or not, you got it. You know. Hi <laughs> Mark, how I you just, doing? I'm okay. I was just uh revisiting the whatever it is and, and saw comments about the cafe. Uh-huh. So I was replying to oh okay to, to John and time got away from me. Wow, working the system real time, huh? <laughs> That's what I do. Which apparently some people would rather I rehearse. Wow, I don't know. You, you seem to be getting along. Hi, John. How you doing? Hello. There it is, John. I just replied to your remark on the forum. You did. Or whatever it is that I, I'm still not totally in sync with all the different communication levels. I, yes, it's very confusing. I, I grant you that. That's, that's what I meant when I said a menu would be nice. <laughs> walk into the cafe and you get a menu. <laughs> and you order up what you want. <laughs> and, and, and Doug, I really liked your poem. That kind yeah, of, I, I liked it too. That's I why think, I showed up today. It's yeah. just to let you know I liked your poem. It's very charming. It was, that was very... Uh, that, I don't know if I can consider myself a poet, but it, it just well, uh, there you comes go. out See, at random. So. Last, last cafe, I made the point that, that a, a person I think highly of, a writer, called poetry disintegrated prose. Mm -hmm. And you took all these, these, you know, disparate thoughts and threw them into a poem, and it worked. Huh? Hold on a second. I might have a. <clears throat> there he is. I'm going to have to get all my plugins. I'll be right back. <laughs> gonna make a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. To you. <laughs> All right. I don't have anything well, else to do, so I'm going to stay right here. I'm glad everybody's making themselves comfortable. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, what did I miss? Nothing. Well, Mark showed up. He complimented Doug on his poem. John showed up. We said hi. Mark was trying to explain what he meant by uh, wanting a menu. <laughs> What's on the radio today, Mark? Okay. Oh. Now he's plugged in. I said, Where "What's are? on the radio today?" 
Well, I didn't, I, I got here late, so I couldn't, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, tune up, a, a, you know, some music. I was reading, uh, I was reading uh, the, uh, so can start post, singing if you'd like the me to. posts, the forums, that sort of, and, and just catching up. And and then so I was late, so I couldn't queue up a tune. Oh well, silence is okay. Ah, your cafe to, to an extent. Cafe. Yeah, I, yeah, I liked your I liked your comments. Yeah, I was just catching up. It, mm-hmm. If you had your druthers, Marco, you you would have you know. Music and quiet corners and, and a stage and an open mic and all, you know, all different kinds of things contained within, you know, a, a space. Mm-hmm. And, and people could just, you know, go to where they're comfortable, right? Yeah, I mean, metaphorically. Mm-hmm. But it, it, well, it kind of works, I, I, I think. I mean, I could imagine that. I could imagine it in a virtual kind of environment. I could imagine. Really? Kind of, um, well, yeah. I mean, imagine that you, you came to uh, a place like Infinite Conversations and at any given time, there are multiple conversations going on that you could participate in uh, and you could see what topics are of interest to you and what's being read, what's being listened to, you know, what's on the menu, as it were and then choose what you would like to participate in and follow that and take that where it goes and um, see what happens next, right? And then maybe then after that plays itself out or after you get uninterested or whatever occurs through that, I mean, I think that it's, it's, a, it's a kind of generative process. Um, then you try something else. But Truth. the idea is that there's kind of life, you know? It's an ecosystem of different things going on that are complementary, but at the same time, you know, they're not without difficulty either. And that's well, two things came. Two things came jump to mind. One is that's sort of like a party back in the day, like you 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 pop in and out of different, you know contained within a you know a nightclub or 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 a backyard or whatever and you and you've got your your drink in your hand and you're 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 trying out different conversations and seeing which one you like and right i guess so i mean if 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 that's what you were looking for (laughs) <laughs> right I, that's but, what, but when i go to parties usually i'm not the one that's socializing and you know um <laughs> uh you know kind of in the middle of the action you know i usually like to find a quiet corner actually uh, to see who comes corner in. brooder <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what that's how i tend to party um so you know i mean that's that's part of the fun of it right is that everybody has different a different style everybody has different uh, preferences. I mean, you've said this yourself, Mark. Everybody's different. Uh, that's just a basic cliche truth, but it's a truth. Uh, and so, what would a caf- a virtual cafe look like that a lot people be different? Uh, that would be kind of the philosophical, I think, idea of it. Um, but of course, there are always limits to how much difference could be um, contained within a single space. I often go to Filipino parties um, and my wife and I are of the same age, which seems to be, and I'm, this is based on here in Kentucky, um, being of the same age is very rare for a Filipino American couple. It tends to be expatriates that fell in love with the country or fell in love with the the people there, um, especially the women. And so at these parties, I'm a 35 year old fella amongst 60, 70 year old men with women that are all the same age, generally. 
Uh, so it's very odd. And it's another undercover project that I have. Um, <laughs> how, th- how old are they? Liter- they're um, it's about the same age as me and my wife, about 35, 40. Uh, th- there's maybe a few older couples that are um, 60 and 60 or I'm, something like that. I, 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 I don't I'm, have a I'm, personal problem with it, but it's, I, I, would, I tend I'm, to hang out with the children. I'm on my way to Kentucky. Is that where you are? <laughs> I am in Kentucky, yes. So yeah, if there's plenty of opportunity if you so desire. But um, my point is maybe that I, I still go to these. I, I could stay at home with my older son while my wife shows off the new baby or whatever is going on or talks to her friends that she hasn't been able to see. But I still attend because... That, and that's one of the reasons I'm here. Um, but I am learning to communicate. I'm learning how do I communicate with aliens, <laughs> for lack of a better word, communicate with people I do not, in any other context, I would never want to talk with, um, perhaps. Which I'm, but here, I'm here because, what, and I, I'm one to jumble my words, so obviously I, I prefer this cafe here. Is it you don't want to communicate them because of their age or because of the culture they're Filipino? Because when we meet face to face, what do we have to talk about besides food, uh, the particular purpose of the party? But I, and that's, that's me and personally. I'm not saying anybody that would go out to these parties would have the same agenda, but I, I live in my own personal space and so I'm trying to branch out to learn more from each individual, no matter what they look like. So my prejudgment that I have or that I did have, um, it, it goes away once I actually start the conversation. Uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Let's see, Ed nodding his head, so maybe he understands. But. I, I, I do. I think, I think every... Every get together, every social get together is exactly as you describe. It is a collection of aliens for whatever reason. Some people know the, you know, it could be somebody's having, like Market said, maybe a backyard barbecue. Well, some people know the host better than others do. And some people know him from work and some people knew him from college or wherever it is that they were. And, and you don't quite fit into that. And so you always spend a whole lot of time just kind of circulating around trying to find, well, who can I connect with in any kind of way? And so you know that that you know the description that you that you had seemed to me to be pretty accurate for just about any kind of get together I've ever been to, and and sometimes we're required to do those things at these interactions. When I was you know when I first came to Germany, I was in a liaison office, so we put on functions all the time for our German counterparts so that they would come and we would get together and 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 try to develop some kind of a rapport amongst ourselves, and it was all this. Everybody kind of either st- standing in the corner brooding. We always had those. And we had other people who were the social butterflies who could quickly light from one conversation to the next to keep conversations going. We had other people that were constantly putting their foot in their mouth um, and other people trying to extract them. You know, it happens everywhere you go all the time. You know, I, I, yeah, so that's why – it appears on the outside that it's probably different than what you're doing, but I don't really think in essence it is. <laughs> I, I think I think meeting up with aliens is pretty easy to do. Anyway. Well, I, I'll be honest with you guys. I have a social phobia. I hate cocktail parties. I haven't been to one in years. <clears throat> and um, idle socializing... I believe is the, is the, one of the worst things about civilization. <laughs> and I avoid it as much as I can. Um, I like having a purpose. And if I have a purpose, a motivation, I'll show up. Success for me is doing it my way. Once I heard Catherine Hepburn in an interview with uh, Dick Cavett, I think this was in my 30s. And uh, she was in her mid 60s and she still looked beautiful and she said he asked her about i think he asked her about her social life or something like that and she said she preferred her she liked her solitude and she said 
I find my own mind absolutely fascinating. And I, I felt when I was in my mid thirties that if I live to be her age, I hope I, I have that kind of belief. And actually that's come true. I really find my own mind absolutely fascinating. And I need very little input from anybody. Uh, but if I do want input from anybody, I sort of let them know, I'm gonna try out this experiment with you and you can say thumbs up or thumbs down or something in between. Um, but otherwise, I just as soon stay home with my books and my music. And I live in New York City, so I can go hang out at the bar or any cafe and, and meet thousands of, of interesting, potentially interesting strangers. But I sort of avoid that. Um, so I'm really here to um, create a public space. And I consider myself a performer first and foremost, because I don't want to waste people's public time. And I, you know, if we're going to have a conversation and we're going to videotape it and put it on YouTube for, you know, I think it would help. I don't know that we need a, to videotape a, an idle social event, but idle socializing. I don't see why we need to videotape it. Um, but if we're going to videotape something and potentially people are going to watch it, I hope it'll be interesting enough. And to me, it, it's important to have a plan. Like you've thought about what you want to do here, what's important to you, what's important to other people. And I want to do it my way. Other people want to do it their way. Let's see what happens if we clearly um, explicate our intentions and make our agendas as transparent or open as possible, how transparent we can actually be. Um, and other people do the same something interesting might emerge, but maybe not. It might be, you know, boring as hell, who knows? But I think it's worth the experiment and I've enjoyed thoroughly uh, many of our um, gatherings here. And I also, I, I have found myself moving into other areas like the underground readers and the underground writers group that really satisfies uh, my criteria for hanging out with people. I feel like those are very um, in the zone kind of spaces where I feel like uh, the weird and the occult and the paranormal um, and the anomalous can be uh, shared in an, in an open field, a relational field, so that uh, feedback can be given and received about works that we're devoting our attention to, our own work and each other's work. So I really feel like um, in my desired outcome for getting on this uh, on these calls has really been fulfilled. So um, I would like to put my attention to the, the underground and see what happens next. Um, and if something compelling shows up here, that's great. That would be like a, an extra bonus, but I'm not gonna be expecting a lot from this group unless you guys expect a lot from yourselves or whoever shows up. Then of course, that may be a different uh, ball game entirely. Uh, we can mix our metaphors all we want to. I think that the more metaphors you have, the better, because all of them will reveal something and they will also conceal something. So that's why we probably need more than one metaphor at a time. Um, so uh, I think the baseball game is okay. Um, the garden is okay. The, th the theater space for me is very compelling. Um, some people don't like laboratory. And I think, Ed, you d really don't like that idea. And I understand that. People don't want to be um, mm. studied. But I guarantee you, someone is studying all of us if we're online. So there's a lot of data on us. And I think we're, uh, there's lots of lurkers out there. Uh, and I would like to um, minim minimize as much as possible in my behavior, uh, any kind of um, uh, shadow effects. So I, I do have a shadow, I admit it, and I want to clarify if I have any shadow issues. So that's probably what has motivated me to show up today. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for saying all that, Don. You're welcome. <laughs> I have a lot more to say, but I'll pause. <laughs> I don't know that I have any immediate response. 
I think that's cool. Uh, and I, um, like, as I've said in, in the forum, uh, on, on the thread immediately preceding this talk, uh, I think that it's good to have different spaces where different things happen. It's good to have an underground and an overground and a, a cult and a illuminated uh, and to be able to go between them. I like, I like both. I like cycling, uh, day to night and, um, and different things happen, uh, in, in different zones, different time zones. Um, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm concerned with what happens in the cafe next and what would be on our metaphorical menu, uh, what would be on our playbill, um, however, whatever met metaphors we want to, well, you. Well, well, success is like what for you? Mm -hmm. Do we have a clue? Do we have a clue? I mean, yeah. honestly, I don't. Yeah. I'm not sure what success. I just made a doing it, doing life my own way mm -hmm. is a part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what it would be like for anybody else, um, but I think I need to figure that out. Uh, maybe not here, maybe not today, uh, but I think the um, Trump is our president. And I'm pretty convinced that if we knew what we wanted, he would not be the president of the United States of America. I think he's a product of uh, massive distortions and denials and um, obfuscation. And so that's what motivates me to come in these public arenas but I'd much rather be home doing my own thing. It's because I want to see if we could shape the public discourse in a different way. And I think that that's a, a tall order. Um, it may not be possible. It may, not, may not even be desirable to many of the people who are here. Uh, but for me, uh, if we can make a, a little bitty, uh, create some sort of learning curve in each session, I believe there could be something that could accumulate that could be of use and also pleasure mm. for ourselves and for others. So that's what I'm, that's what success is sort of like for me. I haven't um, gone into any details because it's still a, a, an open canvas. I'm just putting a few colors on it, but yeah. I like it to, to be bright and bold and flashy rather than dark and, you know, um, depressive and ugly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, if if I may, I think the uh, you know I got into the introduction in the first chapter, and a little bit of of Ed posted the talk that uh, uh, what's her name Haraway uh, Donna Haraway yeah gave and and to connect that with what. Marco's trying to do there is it seems like everybody's trying to do the same thing but what happens is and Marco said this early on before I even came on you know I was a lurker uh, he said he didn't want it to be clubby but that's the way people are that's just the way people are. Everybody wants people, they, they give voice to difference and tolerance and this and that. But what they really like is what you just articulated, John. They like people like themselves and they have private clubs. And, and I, at one part in my, in my life, I was a bartender at a, at a country club, at a golf club. And, and people like to hang out with people like themselves. It's just, and, and the, uh, the message that I'm getting from, from Haraway and all these other people that we've looked into is this planetary uh, idea that we're all connected and we're all the same. And, and, and what was it a couple of weeks ago or something? Love is all there is. no. <laughs> There's a lot more to life than that. And and Haraway's trying to get at it, but in her particular way, and she she uses a she invents language, 
trying to, so you have to join the club to even communicate because she, she combines words. And it's, it's like Ed was saying, when you go and you mix cultures, people, that people have a really hard time communicating. So they go to the mundane. How's the weather? <laughs> Something like that. That most people do not have animosity towards other people. They would like everybody would like everybody to get along, but that's not just not the way it works. So everybody's trying to. They, oh, if we just do it this way, it'll work. If we just do it this way, it'll work. But human beings seem to revert back to our history, which is, you know, hundreds of thousands, or, you know, and we debate this, how old is modern man? Uh, and, and what is technology's uh, influence? And that was, you know, I was trying to get at that in last week's cafe about communication. Is this helping or hurting the overall project, the, hu the sort of human experiment on planet Earth? Uh, there's no doubt we've been a huge success. We've taken over the planet. <laughs> you know, we right. dominated. Right. Uh, uh, and, and Haraway, it, and I agree with each one of these readers, speakers, theorists that we, we've explored in some aspects. I agree with her that the, the amount of people on the planet is a huge problem. And that's one of her, her main ideas, her thesis. It's too many people. How do we reduce the population? Uh, Shoot them. That's how we do it. We, we <laughs> gas them. We kill them. It's a well, war. We, we've done that. And we'll probably do it again. Probably. Yeah. That's the way we control the population growth. That's, I, I would prefer different ways. I would prefer, you know, well, why, if why you spread same-sex relationships? She, <laughs> we she, can drop well, all this baby-making. If, if that's her point. And I was surprised that you didn't read on, John. That's her point. She's she's advocating for uh, her 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 main thesis is I wrote it somewhere. Make kin, not babies. That's she believe she believes that people ought to ought to uh, sort of live in in three or fours. And you have, you have one baby, one breeding couple, and then other people attach themselves to that little group. And, and in that way, in one generation, the, the Earth's population would reduce by over half. Over half. But the problem is, how do you, how do you <laughs> scale that <laughs> to 7 billion people? And, and it, that's the problem with all, you know, the, the Chinese tried it with a one baby uh, rule and, and they killed female babies, something like that. I mean, it always goes off the rails, these attempts to, to, but that is a huge problem. And the other, the, the couple of weeks before Terry Patton, his solution, his problem was, uh, what what uh, it escapes me right now. Oh, to growth. Growth is not the answer. Uh, Donna's is technology is not the answer. And and she has a she has an idea uh, that. But how do you, <laughs> people are people? They're not gonna they're not gonna sign up for that. And and so these discussions. They, you know, they're helpful in that they open people. If somebody tunes into this and we're talking about these subjects, it, you know, at least it puts it on the table in the cafe. Yeah, when I first saw that 
make kin, not babies. Obviously, I've just had a child of my own <laughs> recently, so it's like, wait a yeah. minute. Uh, but there's a lot more to it than the surface reading of that, and I haven't read the chapters or anything like that, but um, since I don't argue, I'll, I'll do my minimal argument here is that, well, how do you make kin without babies? Um, without going the anti-natalist route where um, just go ahead and stop producing humans and um, we'll just go ahead and wipe ourselves out just simply because we won't produce. But uh, that's, no, that's not exactly what she's getting at. No, and I, ha I have another writer friend that I got involved with along, and she wrote a book called Spinster. And she's also in New York. She's a whatever. And, and, and she Spinster is a memoir, nonfiction book about her life, but she's advocating for it's okay for people not to have babies. And now she's a very attractive woman, uh, Brooklynite. Very okay, this is a specific issue about the world, about po you know, po politics, policy, but we were talking about the cafe. We were talking about what we want to have happen. What would make this space, right. this performance, whatever the, it is that we're doing, worthwhile? Uh, for me, it's already worthwhile, and otherwise I wouldn't be here. But I do want to have a plan. I think John's right that it helps to you know, not wing it every, every single time. Uh, and I think this has been a phase of maybe composting. I, I like that metaphor that comes from Donna Haraway as well. There's, and I, I've let that happen because that's just what seemed to want to happen. I didn't have better ideas, but I also have a certain amount of trust in the process. I think that not knowing what you're doing is just what you need to, where you need to be sometimes. And that's also the point of Haraway's book, Staying with the Trouble, is that there's something that's happening. There's some process that's occurring, whether it's above ground, underground, maybe it happens more dynamically underground, actually, uh, but whatever. Um, and staying with it is itself an ethos. It's itself um, a kind of a commitment. It's something that it's a way of being in the world. It's a way of responding to what's going on. And so that's why I wanted to read her is because I felt like it was continuing a conversation that had already begun. It was continuing the conversation that we had with Terry Patton and the one on communication and also picking up on themes from previous conversations like the technology bit and so forth. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can't figure out what's going to happen every single week. Uh, and, you know, when it gets to be Friday or Saturday and we don't know, then, you know, it, it, it induces some, some stress. For so some why people. Not have a, why not have a book to read was, was also the thought because, and, and not just why not, but, you know, in the sense that, it, but, but, but this would actually be appropriate is, is, was the thought. But that's a proposal because, you know, that if others want to do that, we can do that. I'm not stuck on that necessarily. So, so for this to be useful for you today, it's going to be, we're talking about the schedule for the cafe. Is that correct? Is that what we're doing today? What, what our preferences well, yeah. are? I, I, that's one thing. That's one outcome, I would say. I, I'm not prepared to talk about Donna Haraway. This is pr posted yesterday, and I haven't had a chance to do any work with that. So this is my problem. We have a week. If we decide on Friday, that's a, that gives me four days. If we decide on Sunday or Monday, that gives me less and less time, and I got other things to do. So if you want to do a big book like this, and it's not a lot of pages, but it's a deep book, I don't think the cafe is the place to do it. If we're having a week, a weekly event, I like this to be lean and mean and, and feisty and something topical and a short essay or a video. I think those have been our most successful cafes. But I think this may be another Reader's Underground project. And we're already doing Oribindo at the end of the month. That's mm -hmm. at the end of this week. So I'm just wondering if this isn't a, a little bit too ambitious. I definitely think she's worth reading. But under what circumstances do we want to read her? 
And I just don't know that this is the right timing. And also Jeffrey, who isn't here, was talking about bringing some guests on. And um, I think that would be cool. And I think Linda, no, sorry, Lisa was talking about bringing on Stephen Rosen. So I just think a little coordination for everybody would be a benefit because then we could decide what's, what, what do I need to read and when and, you know, have a deadline. I like deadlines. I'm, I'm, I don't like too much open-endedness uh, because too many options I have found, if you keep them open too, too long, are not options anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I sort of like, okay, there's, here are the options. Let's make a choice and let's, let's uh, decide what we're going to do with this. So that's my preference, just mm -hmm. to let you guys know. And whatever you decide is fine. So I'll make a decision based upon what you guys decide. But I just think this is a, 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 a bit ambitious when you're reading along with this, where you're reading a, the Soul Mountain and reading the Aurobindo and we're doing the Aaron Manning. <clears throat> I like the idea of having lots of different things going on at the same time, like a free ring circus, but I also wor worry about uh, it becoming more and more superficial and not enough depth. And I really want to balance for my, this is my own project, mm. balance depth and, you know, span. Yeah. And um, I feel like I've been, um, it's, I'm pretty thin right now. I mean, it's, I, I think I'm, I think I'm spread out a little too much and I'd like to focus on my writing and, and the other underground projects, I think that would be more than enough stimulation and I could make a, a useful contribution. Mm -hmm. So those are my two, that's my two cents. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I resonate with that as well. I mean, part of what I'm trying to do is reconfigure my commitments uh, because as much as I like, you know, want to be at visionary and idealistic and whatnot, at the end of the day, I have so much time and so much energy and I have other responsibilities. I have a family. Right. I have Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, and I don't. I don't like to skim. I don't like to read. Me books. neither. I don't like to feel like I don't have enough time. I, I want yeah. to feel that I have enough time to read something carefully enough that I could think it deeply enough to engage in a conversation that is meaningful. Uh, so, uh, I appreciate you know putting the brakes on the bus, even if the bus is uh, you know a. a, 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 a uh, um, rub, you know, amidst the rubble. Um, but that still leaves the question of the cafe. It still leaves the question of what will we talk about next and after that and after that. And things come up, but they sometimes don't come up. And then there's the question of, well, let's just get together and, and chat. And I don't, I like doing that. I like having the ritual. I like having the, the repetition. I think that the continuity is a value in itself because it, it creates the field effect where things can happen. If we didn't do it, then when something came up, there would be no place for it to, to manifest. So um, having that continuity is important, but there's the, there's the logistical problem of just you know, figuring out what we're going to talk about. And there, I think there's been less um, coordination, less organization, maybe less communication. Uh, so... If we could work on that, that would, uh, I think, maybe solve the, the problem. Because it's not whether or not to read Haraway. Uh, the question for me is what will happen in this space, in this time period that repeats every Tuesday now at you know, noon mountain time. That, that's what I want to not have to think about every week because I want to be reading the books. I don't want to be coordinating what we're reading. Right. And, and it does take sometimes uh, a couple of weeks or a month to get – uh, uh, you know, an author or a filmmaker or someone and everyone together. It is like doing a Broadway play. You have to have everyone together at the same time, in the same place to make it happen. And you have to make a commitment. And I think those events have come off and have been effective here. And I would like to do more of those. But I also recognize their labor. Their, it is a labor of love, but it is a labor intensive for those who want to coordinate. Um, and so... I'm wanting the space to be a space where people can integrate what they're learning in a way that grounds them more and where they feel like they're in a more coherent system than a more decoherent system. And I think that's, that's not easy always to pull off. 
Um, so I have enough fragmentation in my life, plenty of it. So I, I come here to find some coherence and that's part of my task. I'm not blaming anybody else if it doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, I have to, I have to take responsibility for that, but I'm, um, what is it that we're going to integrate if we don't have a plan? You know, that's where my, uh, query is my question mark. Um, this is, this space won't integrate anything unless we've decided, we've made a commitment to that. We're going to do this paper. We're going to watch that movie, or we're going to have a discussion on this political figure or whatever. And to me, I, there's tons of stuff I see every day, noteworthy videos or conversations happening. And I believe we could rise to those occasions too. So, because I think we're a very talented group and I would like to, you know, see us uh, bring forward those gifts and have them, uh, something new emerge out of them. So, but I'm just wondering if we're integrating or we're just uh, adding more, you know, adding more and more and more without the integration, uh, we end up actually uh, breaking down rather than breaking through. Mm. And it's hard to tell which is which sometimes. So that's my two cents. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard from you, Ed. No, no, you haven't. Do you have any opinion? <laughs> of course I have opinions. Um, I usually keep them to myself, though. Um, I, I used to, uh, in, a, in a previous life, I've had a number of those as well. I tutored strategy on an MBA program for about 15 years. And there's all kinds of means and methods. And a lot of people like to think about strategy as a form of planning. So that, that enters into that picture. So when I, when I hear John talking about planning and setting goals and whatnot, it, it resonates a lot with, with things that you know, came up in our books. But for me, and this is what I try to communicate to my students. There's everybody's born a strategist. They don't know it. We don't like to admit it, but everybody is. Because from your earliest memories, one of the first questions that really comes across that remains in your consciousness is people always ask you, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you, would, you, have, you answer. You might have said you wanted to be a policeman or a fireman. Right now, my, my grandson wants to be a garbage truck driver. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to change. But that's, that's his, yeah, but that's his strategic idea right now. What, that's what he wants to be when he grows up. And whether you have, and this is, a, this is a question that Marco faces every day because he's trying to put a cooperative together. Is all like, well, what do you want to be? The co what does a cooperative want to be when it grows up? It, it's a child right now, but what's it want to be when it grows up? And, and the where we get to where we go is because we make decisions along the way. What we don't do for the most part, some people do. I'm not saying this doesn't happen. But each one of us could look into our own selves. And how many of you sat down and said, this is my plan. This is what I'm going to do and did it. The, the fewest of us do that. We tend to make decisions based on that idea of what we want to be when we grow up. And we end up getting there or not getting there and the and the roots to that wherever whatever you are when you grow up is never ever linear never so now marco has this additional problem that or issue we don't have we don't have problems we only have issues <laughs> he has this additional issue that on this platform that that provides let's say the expression of that what he, the cooperative wants to be when it grows up. There are there are channels, which is which is a lovely name to describe what they are. There's readers undergrounds, writers underground. There's infinite conversations. There's there's a metapsychosis. There's there and there's this cafe. And and I would I would say for any one of those, you're involved in the reading underground as well. I was involved in the reading underground. John, what's what's the goal of the reading underground? What does the reading underground want to be when it grows up? And whatever it wants to be when it grows up has to somehow be compatible with that cosmos, whatever it wants to be when it grows up. So each one of these subunits that appears, manifests, comes and will probably go along the way. 
has to become something. And they don't have plans to get there. They have an idea of where they want to end up. And the most successful approach to strategy that you can take, and this is something my students refuse to believe, <laughs> was every decision you make, consciously or unconsciously, is in line with whatever it is you think you want to be. So the only thing you really need to know clearly is what do you want to be when you grow up. And once you have that clearly in mind, you will make decisions to get there. And it could be along the way you decide, well, that's not why I want to be. You know, I wanted to be a policeman until I realized they got shot and there was pain involved. I said, okay, well, I don't, I'm out of here. That's not for me. And I changed what I wanted to be. But I also wanted to have some kind of, this is firemen, policemen, they want to have some kind of interaction with people. So I ended up becoming a teacher. Well, I didn't actually end up becoming a teacher because that's the least thing that I've ever done in my life, even though that's what I set out to. That's what I wanted to do. So I went off to university and I took a degree program in English education, never taught English as a native language. I moved to Germany and ended up teaching English as a foreign language. But OK, well, it's kind of teaching, modify the goal. Well, what I want to be when I grow up is a little different. And so we modify that and we per persist. And success for me is surviving all of that. That's what success is. So what we have here in this cafe is a space. It is literally a space. It is an open space. It is something that everyone on this platform, regardless of where they are, knows is there. So we have times where we, we read a paper and we talk about it intensely and, 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 and yeah, intensely. But then we also have, Carolyn comes up and goes, I've been kicking this around. This is bothering the shit out of me, this idea. Could we have you guys kick it around? And so she threw that in there. So one time we do that. Well, that's certainly not on some trajectory for the cafe, other than the cafe is the place where anything can go. Anything can happen here. This, this is actually a place, if we step back from it and look at it, this is a place where you can try out whether something might go. If it gets a little bit of resonance here, it's probably got a relatively good chance of surviving for a week or two. But that will all depend on the people who actually get involved in doing that. And it's so, so what the cafe might wants to become when it grows up is much, much different than what the writers underground would want to be when it grows up, or what the readers underground is going to be when it grows up, or where the metapsychosis is going to be when it grows up. But they all have to fit into this overarching, whatever the platform, the cooperative is going to be when it grows up as well. And th this is a very tricky because it is a multi-layered challenge for Marco in particular to try to juggle these together. And, and that's why my, my feeling has been, as far as the cafe is concerned, it's okay to be nothing because in that regard, it is the place where anything can, can happen. Sometimes very specifically and very guidedly, sometimes not at all. But, and this is why, I hate the word idle chat because it's never been idle chat. Even this this evening is not idle chat because we might start out in idle chat and we may start kicking around what it's like to go to the garden party or not. But in the end, we're actually thinking seriously, all of us in our own way about how we see our own futures within another future that's being envisioned by someone other than ourselves, which is a very a very tricky thing to do. But I always come away from the cafe with something because my, at my age and the where my position in life, I wake up every morning, say, I wonder what I'm going to learn new today. And I always learn something new on Tuesdays. I don't always learn something new on other days of the week, but I always learn something new on Tuesdays, always, regardless of what happens here because somebody says something, somebody does something, and if somebody else comes up with a serious idea, here, bring it. I love the idea that Jeffrey has some guests he could bring in. I love the, the fact that we were able to talk to filmmakers and we were able to talk to, to others. When my, when my own family discovered there's a YouTube channel out where your face appears all the time, I go, yeah, did you stop and listen to any of that stuff? 
And they go, no, you're too weird. We know you're weird, you know? So, okay, then why should it bother you? Stop and listen for a moment. Maybe you'll find something of interest. Maybe you'll find something that's attractive to you. Maybe you'll find something that simulates your own thought. There could be knock on effects. But it's not like you could start at the beginning of the cafes and follow it somewhere. I would hate to think that that would be the way it would go. If we're going to sit down and read our Urbindo, I certainly hope that at the end we have an idea where we're going to come out at the end so that we can get through that entire reading. And that needs to be well planned and organized. And, and Marco is very much faced with a challenge of having to do way more coordination because <laughs> technical um, technology is not, um, does not save time. There is no labor saving technology. It always makes more, you have, you have to spend more time than you ever would have tried to get done what you were going to do because there's just too many little details that they get in the way. And if you're trying to do this on multiple levels, you've got basically an impossible task, but you're managing. I know you feel like you're not. <laughs> we persevere, we carry on. Yeah, yeah, really, it's like, okay, keep calling and carry on. Right, but well, you are, go ahead. Marco, maybe you could share your experience with Infinite Jest, which, sort of birthed this idea of yours. And that was, that was, there were like 500 people or something reading one book and there were only, I don't know, 20 people who actually contributed to the conversation online, written conversation. And six or 10 of us who actually half of that. who showed up online face to face. Of course I was one, yeah. uh, <laughs> but maybe you could, uh, because that's the enormity of what you've taken on here. And I think Ed articulated it. Well, it's just incredible. And, and, and John, I would never ever try and do all those different uh, what do you call, what are they even called? Forums? Mm -hmm. Meta this, underground this, overground that, <laughs> this. <laughs> I would never do that. That's like going to school. Exactly. More like a school. You know, I didn't get to go to school. Oh. I, had, I had to bust tables. And I had to wait I've done tables. everything. I had to give my tips to my father, who was a, a bum, who wouldn't go, go out and get a job. So my education sucked. Mm -hmm. And I would love to have had the leisure, like a lot of the suburban kids I hung out with, to go to school. And when I, and I lived near NYU, most of my friends were uh, going, you know, to getting their master's degrees, going to graduate school at NYU. But I hung out with people who were going to school. And I was uh, benefited. And I went to a lot, and I still go to a lot of events, uh, educational events. And I think there are more of those opportunities than ever before. But I'm, but the factory model education that most people were going through was basically about monetizing some skills that they had or some curiosity that they had. And they very often, as you as you noted, Ed, they get out of school and realize they're not interested in pursuing that at all. It was good that they went through it, perhaps, not paying off the student loan. I, I, I had so many friends who all they did was worry about their student loans for 20, 30 years. You know? <laughs> they went into bankruptcy trying to pay off their student loans. So I think a lot of that was just pure vanity. Um, you know. And I think now I know, uh, you know a lot of us, have, uh, we have intellectual interests and we have a lot of curiosity and we like to study things. And, uh, but we, we don't want to go back to school, and we may not necessarily want to monetize anything at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is a, a new kind of arrangement, a living arrangement we're trying to create um, together. And uh, I hope that we can use all the resources that we have and use it well. Um, and I'm interested, when you grow up, Ed, what happens next? Because I've grown up. I'm 64 years old. I want to get to the next phase. Okay. Okay. And I don't necessarily look around me and see that people my own age, I go, I go have lunch every day. There's a free lunch at the uh, senior center. 
And a lot of people are arthritic and, you know, falling apart and, um, you know, have first level Alzheimer's. I've worked with the elderly, so I, I know the signs of it. And, you know, um, I don't have a space really. I do a hundred push-ups a day. I take cold showers. My body fat, my muscle fat ratio is excellent. Um, I, I feel like I'm pretty sharp on my best days. So I don't have a, and I know that this, if you don't have enough support in your system, people fall apart very quickly. And uh, I think that's up to each of us to find the support that we need to get to where we want to go. And I'm a grown up. I have my days where I regress, and, but I hope I regress in service of something that's transcendent so that I just don't fall into self-pity and, uh, you know, narcissism. I'm not totally free of those. Uh, I don't think anybody is. When I hear people talking about those narcissists over there, I go, oh, really? <laughs> so, that's so, all a matter uh, of degree. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're an American, you're a narcissist, believe me. And, and if you're a French, you're, you're a narcissist, too. I mean, these are deeply inbred over many generations. So uh, I'm just like putting that out there that uh, I think we have to re-educate ourselves out of the very toxic educations most of us had. Some of you probably may, may not have had a toxic relationship to learning. I certainly did. I was smacked very hard for showing anything like curiosity you know, pay attention, do what we want you to do. So, uh, you know, I feel, I feel like those traumas are still activated on occasion, but if I know I'm, I'm being triggered, I have a little more leverage than I did uh, when I was younger. So I think there's a, a lot of skill and ability and uh, curiosity here. And I, I believe that uh, we could create conditions for, you know, keeping that moving to another level, if you want to use that metaphor. Of course, you may be perfectly happy at the level you're at and may not want to move anywhere. So that's okay, too. So I'm just curious, can, can, can people who have different interests um, be together? Well, you well, know, because is... I like order. I like order. I like also not too much order. I, like a, I don't like chaos at all, but I do like complexity. Uh, I don't like oversimplifying things. It tends to drive the system towards chaos when people try to make things simpler than they actually are. Um, but I like making plans because I'm, as a performer, the curtain's at 8 o'clock. You have your makeup on, your costume, you know your lines, you're well rehearsed, you're, you're sober, and, you, and you, hit your, you hit your mark and the curtain goes up. And everyone else does that too. I think you have a good show. So I'm very, I'm much, I come very much out of the discipline of the theater. And that's very much, even though I haven't done a play in years, I've done some performances on, but they've used some in solo stuff, you know, like at the Bowery Poetry Club, I'll do readings there, um, which is different from doing a show where a lot of people are required. Uh, this is kind of like that, I think, in some ways. Um, and if you want to be do it at improv, that's fine. But even improv takes a certain amount of paying attention very carefully to what other people are doing. So those are my interests. And I think some of the things I am allergic to when I come here is like, I want to make this a, this is public time. Everyone's putting in an effort to show up. I want something useful to happen for each of us. And, and there's kind of two, two comments. One, one of them is there is something useful happening for me, but that's just me. And that's what I've articulated. Yes, and, sir. And sometimes there's something useful happening for, for Marco, and that's what he articulated. What I also like, John, you were able to get Lynn Clare to come. You brought Lisa in there. Uh, Jeffrey has a couple of people. Nothing is prohibiting anyone from bringing someone along and saying, I, I have a place where I can fit you in so that you can say what you have to say, and you will have interested listeners. You will have people who will take time to engage you even before you show up. I think that's I, I don't think that is available to a lot of people in a lot of places. And if everyone who has that in mind did that, Marco would have a whole lot fewer scheduling problems what the cafe is concerned with. Some things do show up rather impromptu. The, the, the knock on discussion from Democracy Earth that ended up here in the cafe was well-timed because it was, it was timely. It was exactly at the time it needed to take place. 
And here was a place where you could kick ideas around for people who are open for something. That, you know, if there's anything that sells this cafe, it's openness for newness. That we do have. So That's we true. know that. So a lot of the scheduling problems do, they don't all go, they will never all go away, but a lot of them reduce, their intensity reduces. And there could be from time to time, sessions, meetings, where we're simply here to keep the space free so that the weeds don't come in and grow it over. That's all we're doing. But that can also be very useful because of how it is that we interact with one another after so many sessions of being together with one another. We re-interact differently with each other now than we did 20 cafes ago. Much right. different. See, so that there is also, for anyone who, who is masochistic, or enough to look at all of those tapes would realize, well, there's development that has taken place here as well amongst, you know, four or five, six different human beings on this planet. It doesn't happen all the time. So that's, that's the one side. And the other side has to do with the numbers that, that um, Mark brought up. Way back in the previous millennium, <laughs> when we were on, on Usenet, in a, in a given Usenet forum, there would be 10 people who ended up flaming each other. And then they'd go away and, and then they'd come back later and develop another topic until flame, the flame wars took place again. All, all discussions ended in Usenet when Hitler was mentioned. There's a lot that you can, you can Google this stuff. There's this, I, rem I remember that, that, yeah. that, that yes. word, flaming. Yes. That's yes, now flame. gone. Yes, it's but now it's gone because we don't do that anymore because we're strong. interacting face to face. It's it's tr no, it's trolling now. It used now, to be now, now it would be trolling, yeah. But that was flaming, and and I can tell you these were these were more than exciting times. But in any given conversation, there were ten people carrying on a conversation, and there were at least one hundred people reading and following the conversation. Never once typed a key, a message. Never once sent a message in. Your description of the reading of Intimate Adjust was exactly that. 500 people are reading it. You know, 10 people are talking, 20 people are, let's call it 50 people are talking about it and 10 people are showing up to, to actually discuss it face to face. Those, those are the standard statistics that I believe will continue on digital media until the end of time. Now, what we're doing and what we're talking about are the, the five people that are meeting here face to face. But there are others who are being affected by this. Otherwise, they wouldn't listen. You know, you, you by your own admission, Mark, watch tapes before you showed up. You know, we have others, Duggins, looked at stuff and showed up. You know, my he, therapist pushed me. Well, he might be. You could, we all have different motivations, Mark. <laughs> some of them are internal, some of them are external. You know, whatever it takes, you know, it takes. And we have others who, yes, yes who are, are actually looking at this and may or may not ever get involved, and that's fine. But there has to be a space where even, even the, the, the more shy amongst us could, could, it, could give it a go, you know, because they realize that they look at a couple of these tapes, nobody gets their head bit off here. We can have very heated and intense and lively interactions, but nobody gets their head bit off. Nobody has the intention of biting any, and nobody wants anybody's head bit off. We, we enjoy the intensity, not the biting. Right. <laughs> you know, so that's the part that we're going to keep, it's like lion cubs, you know, when they're playing out there. It looks like they're being aggressive or not, that kind of thing. So, so one, one of the things that, that I like about the cafe is, is the fact that it preserves this space that can be anything. It can literally be anything at any given moment. When it's this, that's good. And when it's that, that's fine too. But at least there's a space for that. And just like there are, there's a space for people who want to share their writing with one another and get feedback. There are places where we can go read specific books together and get feedback hoping that there are going to be 500 people reading and not just the five that are talking about it on the, you know, the online groups, you know, Eduardo from Brazil is one like, he just, to me, he just, like he showed up, 
Well, he liked what was going on and boom, you know, he's, he's now a very active contributor. You know, I think that's great. Obviously, there's something in every one of these little spaces that is on Infinite Conversations that is attractive for someone, which is what they want to be. So they're being that. So that part's good. Now, where, where one wants to go with all of those, well, the powers that be within that, that universe of infinite conversations have to think about that. And they're doing a lot to do that, you know. Ann Roberts and the Wisdom Council idea, and, you know, there, there are projects popping up and there are ideas sprouting in a lot of different areas, more than any one of us can handle altogether. So we all have to pick and choose what we want to do. Well, which I think is perfectly fine. That's the, that is actually the, the most positive thing about the entire platform is you can find something that meets your needs. Well, it, seem, it seems to me, and this is for you mostly, Marco, that this, the analogy that best suits this is a university in that there are different classrooms <laughs> that people can go to, you know, you sign up for, and, and and somebody takes the lead and, but this particular one is like the lounge. Yeah. Like when I went, when I went back to school in the nineties and there was a particular building dedicated and this goes to graduate school too later, a particular building dedicated to psychology. It, and each, uh, there were like, I don't know, 80, 100 different courses that you could take and taught by different teachers. You could go talk to the teacher. They had office hours. So you could do a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. you go to class and you hear, you read books and discuss it, whatever, bring in speakers. And then there was the lounge. And everybody in the lounge <laughs> was a psychology major or a social work, whatever, whatever it was. And that's what, this is like the lounge. Mm -hmm. And you go, it's, it's almost like a party. But it the overall structure is like a school, like a university. Mm -hmm. and, and, and John, this is what it's like, John. Like, well, I, I, did, was, I, I did go to college, I, 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 but I just dropped out. You know, yeah. I took all the courses I was interested in. And I said, fuck this, I'm out of here. Because I wanted to be an on, actor. So I came to New York and I started my own theater company and did my own thing. But, yeah, I, did have enough, but I saw enough of academia to know it wasn't for me. Yeah, okay. but that's what in in that there's all these different sort of courses, right. and, and and yeah, and now maybe you drop out of the cafe mm -hmm. the lounge because it's not working. You know, it's not working for you. But it, I I like Ed's thing that it's free and open. You you know, and you go sit at a tape, you sit in the corner. Or you sit at a table, you join other people, and you join in a conversation. But, you know, we're sort of getting familiar, intimate. Every, every, every cafe, somebody intimates a little more intimacy. Like, Doug, I'm about to, you know, drive to Kentucky and hook up with a 30-year-old woman. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> you know, sounds like my type of place. Uh, it, you know, you just, it, and, and yeah, introversion, extroversion, but that's only a fraction of what makes people who they are. Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> and I, I think um, my education was, happened in weekend workshops. I mean, I was, I was working all week and on the Saturday and Sunday, I would go to the open center and, you know, I did workshops with Rupert Sheldrake and every Tibetan Lama came to New York, did a workshop <laughs> at the open center yeah. and, you know, all the, all the healing arts that were, uh, there was an explosion of interests 
And, you know, I, I did NLP and hypnotherapy and all kinds of stuff. And I worked with brilliant people. So, but it was a different kind of education. And the workshops uh, tend to be experiential and skill-based. And you're ac- actually, once you leave the workshop, you're supposed to be able to do something with it, <laughs> which, you don't ex- which you don't get when you have a degree. <laughs> Believe me, I've worked in them. I've also worked at, uh, I worked at a media school. I was recruiting prospective students. And I just saw how uh, these systems work. You get very idealistic people who think they're going to take a course and they're going to end up being Barbara Walters or something, you know, and and it doesn't happen that way. And I think that's what a lot of, uh, what a lot of the higher education is about. You think you're going to go to school and get a degree and you're going to become a public intellectual and that, no, no, that doesn't happen. You end up working at the gift shop at the gallery, (laughs) even though you have a PhD. I know because I've worked in those gift shops. (laughs) with a lot of PhDs, you know, and that's where they end up. So I think that's, we can do better than that, I hope. Uh, you know, if we just sort of direct our intentions, um, because I think we have a lot of untapped potential that this, uh, you know, our neoliberal grid doesn't need us to be that smart. It wants to dumb us down as much as possible and to manipulate us uh, as much as possible. And so that's why I, I have a much more workshop-oriented activist mindset. And uh, I, I want to learn something. I'll find somebody. I'll take that workshop for that weekend, and I'll know a little bit more, and I'll go back the next weekend. So I like that kind of energy to happen here so that, uh, you know, I can offer a small workshop with a, a very small group of people, and you will get plenty of attention. And hopefully at the end of that, you'll have something when you leave, that's that's useful, delightful to you that you can share with others. So I like to chunk things down to skills. And then I think if there are more skillful people around, we would have a much better world than we do now. So, and we could move things forward in ways that uh, I think are actually being suppressed. Um, so I, I, I was, uh, I remember, you know, with the Occupy, I marched with Occupy. I saw those goons coming at people with clubs and it ain't pretty, believe me. So that's where my, that's where my kind of activism is. I'm not an armchair critic who sits back and pontificates about geopolitics. I can do that and I certainly enjoy it, but um, you know, you have to show up and demonstrate. I still believe that that's where most of the action is, is in who shows up at the march and how many numbers are there. And that gets reported by the media. And I know they underreport because they're paid to underreport. But if you show up after a certain numbers of people there, they can't lie about it anymore. And that's how the gay movement happened. People kept showing up and they kept underreporting it. And then, and then when millions started to show up, they couldn't, they couldn't hide this anymore. And it became a movement. I would like to see some kind of movement happen. That's where my energy is. Uh, but I also realize. Some people may want to retire and just kick back and relax. And certainly that's a temptation for me as well. Um, but I just feel like we have a very a brief window of opportunity. And that's closing. It's closing really fast. And I think this is what Donna Haraway is pointing out, that some of it is irreversible already. But that doesn't mean we should give up because there's still – we may be able to create vibrant enough networks and become a collaborative or co- what she calls a companion species so that we, and that would be a new human. Um, we're not there yet, but I think enough people, if they saw th- that it's going to be requ- a requirement, <laughs> then they would change because I don't think people just say, Oh, I think I'll just change today. They usually are under some sort of pressure to do so. So anyway, that's my, that's my preference is that we, you know, hunker down and get some skills. But then I think that may not be for the, this cafe, which may be much more about socializing and chatting. Um, but I think it'd be fun if there were enough workshop oriented kind of events happening that you could bring what you learned about that to the cafe and make that a topic. Like Doug and I have had some experience doing clean language with TJ and we had that experience together, we could 
bring in something that we learned and we could share it just like show and tell when you were a kid in, in school, you know, something happened, you bring it in, you show and tell. So I think that would be another uh, helpful thing to do with this, with this cafe, not just bringing in guests, but also developing the skills that we, you know, are dormant in all of us. Certainly getting better as readers and writers is I think a high priority for most of us since we like to read and write, so. And I think we're doing pretty good at it too. I think some very good stuff is coming across. Thank you. But to re reiterate it, the, at the risk of becoming redundant again, <laughs> there has to be a place to bring it to. You know, I really like what you did with the EST Magicians, John. I thought that was that was great. I, I act it's one of the few videos I actually sat down and watched. I'm not one of these people that sit and watch videos of other people doing stuff, but I watched that one, and I I like what came out of it. And there's no, there's nothing that would prevent you or Doug or TJ from bringing that here, and and sharing that and 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 saying, okay, well. This is kind of what we got out of it. Why don't you guys get a feel for that too? You know, you've, you've done things here in the cafe that were very helpful and that, that, I, that I got a lot out of. I just don't want to do that all the time. And right. I don't want to do it every time. And I, and I also, my, my, perhaps my resistance here, it's just like I don't want to read something every week either. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just as down on, sometimes I'd like to show up and say, who's got, who, who solved the riddle of the universe? And they state it, and we can, yeah, and we would uh, pick it apart or not. That has to be too. But there has to be the space that it can be brought to. That, that's the thing. That's what I, you know, my, my own idea of what this cafe is about is also developing and changing from all of the input that comes. And it just, it just seems to me that there has to be a place for that. And I would hate to think that that place got instrumentalized in any sense of the word by anyone with any interest. It's just, it's the space where you can bring. You can bring your friend who has something to say. You can bring yourself and your buddies because you did something good. You can, you can, you can bring in a new writer and go, hey, I just, I, I, I saw this video. I thought this was great. I think. I'd like to hear your reaction to this too. And, and we focus on that. Maybe it is a text that comes up. It, it could be just about anything. Um, the people who are trying to put the platform together or, or Duggins and, 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 and Roberts with their, you know, with the, the, their elders project, they might come up with something and say, I, I need to run this past somebody. I want to run it up a flagpole and see if anybody salutes at all. Well, this is the place to do it. We got a flagpole here on the ground, you know, run it up. See, and it's there. So we, we have that. That's this space within this universe of infinite conversations that takes place that it can happen here. And I don't I don't see any indication that anyone within or around this system would prohibit that. Which means if you have an idea, throw it on the table. I'm pretty sure most people go, OK, yeah, we'll try that. And. Even though we say, okay, I'll try that, may sound very lapsadaisical, it's still seriously intended. Otherwise, one wouldn't show up and try it. And that's, that's what those of us who show up here on Tuesday nights do, or afternoons or mornings or wherever it is that you guys are in the world. I mean, it's easy. But um, this is the space for that. We'll bring it in. Suggest it. Bring it up. We'll do it. I, I, I would certainly never say no. I'm, I'm pretty open to this about anything because I know I'll get something out of it one way or the other. I always get something out of it. That's why I'm here on Tuesdays. I get something out of it. Just like I've got an immense amount out of tonight already. You know? But that's just me. About you, Doug. Hello. Um, yeah, he doesn't have his halo anymore, so now he's got to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's quite a few things I'd like to say that I've not said. 
Uh, I agree with everyone. That's what I tend to do. But I, my, my metaphor right now is not the university. Um, a lot of us have noticed or noted that it's, it's dead to us. We've discussed it in different areas that even those within the university are saying, well, what can I do to not necessarily get out of this, but to achieve what I really desire, what Ed was talking about. What do I want to be when I grow up? It's not some, another cog and another machine, even if this, this machine allows me to get grants and do this and that, but I, I might come back to you later, Mark, for ideas of how to start a business, but I've, I've always wanted to create something called the open house um, which is essentially a cafe with maybe a cafe library fusion. Uh, that's how I see the metaphors. Um, like where, as long as somebody has the keys um, to let the other people in, then it's open. The, the te- there be a line of computers there for you to use. There's rooms all around for you to start a readers group to just have a chat with somebody else that maybe you don't want anybody else to hear or. You can set up a course here or there. Um, And it's useful to note that here at the the Cosmos, here, not necessarily just at the cafe, but the collective in general, like where Marco is slowly allowing others to have access to certain aspects and it's, it's picking up here and there with, it's a trial and error. Um, But going off of what you said, Ed, that I'm not just allowed, I'm I'm begging people to (laughs) And and like, like I said, if I'm, if I'm the the go-to guy right now that you have, then (laughs) you're in trouble, but you're staying with it. You're staying with the trouble. You're, um, I I have hundreds of other things I, I need to do. Um, I, I have a full-time job. I have a full-time family and I don't have internet connection at my house. Uh, Little things like that kind of put a damper on setting up groups and things like that. But if somebody says, well, let's do the cafe on Wednesdays and we'll have this specific reason why we're here, then that's fine. And the Tuesday cafe can stay. Or if you have another idea that, well, let me start my uh, book club, Based on, I, I like to read books about um, child development or something like that, or the environment. Um, little groups can form, and we're, we're slowly seeing that we can do that. But this is kind of a core time right here to, well, Ed pretty much said everything that already needed to be said about it, but I, I feel for it to be useful to me is, just simply being here, showing up. I've been participating for five or six months now, and I'm a different person. I'm reading Slaughter Dykes' uh, You Must Change Your Life alongside of Foams and alongside of 900 other, other books uh, just based on being here. And um, reading really cha- changes my life in a lot of ways. Um, even Haraway's simple comment of make Ken not babies um, at what follows at, on one pa- page is, uh, but it also matters how Ken generates Ken. And that's, I, I don't know. I hope we can dig into it and uh, find out more about what that actually means. But that's generally what we're doing here is generating Ken. We are Ken generating Ken. And, uh, that's all I need to say right now. Well, you know, I'm fine about reading Haraway if that's what y'all want to do. But I was responding because Jeffrey said he's maxed out and he, mm-hmm. he, he would like to read it, but not now. And Ed, you just said sometimes you don't want to read. Mm-hmm. You'd rather do something else. Like this could be a placeholder between uh, scheduled events. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have to over schedule or under schedule. I mean, if, you know, you have someone who's going to, who's going to show up. Um, you know, I like to have a theme or some reason to show up besides just hanging because I get very antsy 
uh, because I got so many things going on right now that I, I need to pay attention to. But I also want to share and support and sponsor and sponsor is a very important idea that I think has circulated widely here rather than instrumentalize. You use that word, Ed, and I'm very allergic to it as well. Uh, but it's tricky, you know, mm -hmm. if you want a sponsor, a sponsor, I don't want a mentor. I don't want a coach. I do not want a therapy therapist or therapy. I'm not here to rescue anyone and I'm not here to be saved and I don't want to persecute anybody. <laughs> I want to get off of that, that uh, drama triangle as much as I can. Um, but so what's left? I think that's really interesting. Once you, once you get off that drama triangle, um, which, which is so pervasive in our culture, rescuing someone or being persecuted or persecuting victimhood, uh, it's very tricky because I think we're so programmed to instrumentalize and to strategize and to make this work for me and to operationalize. And that's why I was really relieved when that idea of being a, a co-sponsor really started to take off. For, for me, that's when you see something in somebody else and you're paying high, high quality attention to that which is in someone else that you wanna bring forward, help them bring forward. I think that's a very rewarding kind of relationship, both as a giver and a receiver. At a certain point, when you're co-sponsoring someone, you get tremendous benefits from, from exercising that capacity. It's a real pleasure to see another person, you know, find their voice or articulate a, different, a difficult idea or start a project, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, that's a kind of... An, um, environment I hope we support one another in, in establishing because well, I think we, when we have those conditions, you know, we're going to prosper a great deal and, and flourish and stop instrumentalizing or strategizing, but doing something a little more nonlinear, but not totally. I think we still, the linear mind's still going to be around for a while because we do need clock time to coordinate these, these events. So I think we need, but uh, obviously something much vaster, uh, this intersubjective space is uh, is so much more complex than any of us could possibly imagine when we throw in the paranormal and the, the anomalous events and the serendipitous events. And I just hope we start paying attention to, to those capacities because I believe that's our only hope, really, is if we are paying attention because to those capacities and, and well, creating the conditions for them. I, I hear you, John, but I would like to hear what Marco thinks about this discussion because he's the one who's provided and, and this platform. So, it, and, and to him, if he goes away, this, all of it goes away. The infinite conversations, all those little subgroups, classrooms, whatever. So I would like to, your clean space thing, you know, what does, what does, what is Marco's intention? Where does he see this in three or five years? Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> well, I am going away, <laughs> you know, and that's the point. Um, I don't know when, you know, at some point I will go away. At some point We're I'll... all going away eventually, yeah. <laughs> and we don't know okay. when, but that's pretty guaranteed. We're all going away. <laughs> but, but it, I mean, certainly that's, uh, that's on my mind, uh, and um, it's a um, motivator, I would say. Uh, to bring forth that which is within me and that which is within all of you. And that, I mean, the, the reason that I... It's not, it's not like you're Bill Gates or, or Warren Buffett. You have a life and you have a family and you have kids and you have to take care of all of that. This is true. It's not like you can... I don't know. I can't remember. John's you're saying I'm not word. a billionaire, right? Yeah, you're not okay. a sponsor. You're not a sponsor. You're not a patron. You're a 
person trying to make his way in the world with a family and obligate you know, all that stuff. That's right. That's correct. You're not a Carnegie with the Carnegie Foundation handing out grants and stuff for people to do research, right? Nope. No, not that I'm aware, no. Um, <laughs> but I'm not sure what the... Um, I mean, the point is that, that all this takes work, all this requires resources. Honestly, it's not very expensive to host a website and pay for, you know, whatever web services or bandwidth or storage, etc. It's not expensive in those terms. It's not the money in that sense that is... Uh, really significant in holding this together. I, I have no doubt that the people that are involved, the people who have already been supporting uh, this, this show, these events, uh, would support all that. Uh, and that, you know, I just haven't been very effective in selling it because, it's, because I resist even that whole activity. I, I don't want to bring a commercial aspect into this. Um, but I don't want to deny either my needs because I do have a family. I do have bills to pay, taxes to pay, etc. Uh, there's a cost to living in the societies that we do. And, uh, there would be real consequences if I didn't pay those, those bills and those taxes. Uh, so I have to pay attention to that, but I've been doing as much as I can to, carve out a different way of being that requires less and less of, um, I guess, participating really in, in the rat race, participating in, in the whole destructive, blind, you know, obsessive machine. Like, I want out of that. And my desire for Cosmos has been to create an alternative space uh, where we could do the kinds of things that we're doing, the reading, the and, writing, the learning, I think the conversation. In, in that you've been successful. Partially. I've, I've, I've started something. Mm -hmm. I've started. I, I, I've been successful insofar as we're all here, insofar as there are interesting people who've shown up and who've wanted to do the same thing or something very similar. And we've been, and our interests, our passions are, have converged in certain ways. But there are these tenuous assemblages, like uh, Haraway talks about in her book. And it's, it's still, I think, in a very young phase. This is, it's not supported. We're not, we don't have billions of dollars. We don't have, um, we can't just build whatever technology we want. It's really limited to what I can do, which is not very much compared to a real professional programmer or a web development team or, or, or whatever else. And there's, there's all kinds of ways that I see that the whole experience could be much better than it is. Some of that's technological. Some of that's just supporting people who would want to do this work, but who otherwise can't because they have to pay their bills. And so they're doing a bunch what of other is, things. What is this work? I think it's, it's culture. I, mean, I think that what Cosmos is about is, is a platform for culture. I think that culture is being decimated. Uh, it's been destroyed uh, in contemporary life. Uh, I think we have kind of the simulacra of culture. Uh, and we have a lot of deep culture kind of embedded within popular culture. But I think that the essential things that culture requires, which is a deep focus, which is a deep mutuality, which is a collaboration. I mean, all these kinds of things that we're working on when we have a conversation like this or read a book or do a, a, a writer's session or publish a work. I mean, all of that is, those are all the mechanisms of cultural creation. And my desire my essence, who I want to be when I grow up, is a culture cre creator. Now, I do that in particular ways, as a, as a writer, as a poet, as a media creator, what have you. But 
I came to a point in my life, which is around the time that we met, Mark, where I got fed up with the ways that culture was being created or miscreated in all around me on Facebook and all these other spaces. It made me sick. Uh, I thought it was horrible. Uh, and some of that had to do with my experiences with the integral movement and what I you know, came to see as the, the ways in which culture there was uh, colonized by this um, framework, you know, this kind of framework-centric mental idea about evolving to the next level or what have you. And I, I'm not talking about it the way that you were talking about it, Chana. I'm talking about that specific discourse. Uh, but at the same time, there was a lot of brilliant people and with like Ken Wilber, he attracted a lot of really interesting, brilliant people to him. They came from all over the world, uh, literally. I mean, Sri Lanka, I came from New York. People came from Australia. I mean, to do workshops with, with him and with the people around him. And so there was, I mean, there's this kind of like, I have that in my, in my background. I, I relate to that because I've been through it, but I also, I think, came to the limits of it. And I wanted to get back to what I would, what I felt was more real culture, and that's where, you know, I, I parted ways with Terry. And in the kind of aftermath of, you know, dis, uh, dis divesting myself of the integral revolution, I said, I want to read a book. I want to read a real, a big, thick book that requires a lot of work, that requires time and investment, and and where if people show up and do it something will happen. And that's what happened. That's what I did. I put it, I made a web page, I put it out, a bunch of people signed up, and then we had Facebook and Twitter, and we, we read through the book. I read the book. Every night I sat there, read a few more pages, underlined stuff, we brought it out. And what was so amazing that happened there, the reason that I felt like I had to do something more, was that you know, all these really interesting, talented, um, beautiful people showed up. And I was th Taylor Kinney and I was thinking about K Katrina Ruth and, you know, folks I would never would have met but who converged on this event of, of reading a book together and talking about it. And I realized that that was a way out. It was a way out of, of the, the shallows, out of the, the nonsense, out of the, you know, the bullshit parade of you know, the, the, the world as it has been going. Uh, now, it's not an answer, though. I mean, it's not, that's, that's the point. It's, it's not trying to have, the, the, you know, the one solution to the one big problem. It's saying that, I think a lot more in the lines with Haraway, that we have to find relationships with one another, with the people who are actually showing up, and we have to create culture together. And so my um, desire has been to go and bring, go, go and, here's how one way I could put it, to recreate a tradition. Uh, that's coming out of perhaps left field, but what I mean is that when we read books, when we have discussions, when we produce our own creative work and it resonates with others and sparks things in others, we're creating our own tradition. We're creating our own, and we're creating some place to be. And I, mean, I don't want to get too idealistic about it right now, but that's kind of my, my meta project. And I have personal ambitions within that. And they, these kind of constellate around my own poetics. Um, I want to bring forth what I consider to be my best work. I want to bring forth an au revoir. Uh, I mangled that pronunciation, but I have a work within me to bring forth. And that's schematically, I, I know what that is. I know where I'm going with my work. And all of this, for me, is a place to bring forth my work because my work requires other people bringing forth their, theirs. Uh, and I don't know what that, all that is. That really is just coming through the individuals who, who show up. I, have, I had no idea. Anything that Jeffrey, the minor gesture, his science fiction operas, opus, uh, completely off my radar. I had no idea it even existed until he brought those worlds into my purview, mm -hmm. into, my, into my world. And so that's what I feel that, that we're doing. And my, my, my commitment, and it's, 
you know, if I had a billion dollars, I might not be doing it. <laughs> I might be content to, you know, sit on my private yacht and read Peter Sloterdijk or whatever. <laughs> but I think that this cosmos sphere, for it to become a viable place that sustains beyond me, so that if I die, it continues. I want it to be here for my daughters. I want it to be here for my friends. Uh, I think it's important that there is a place like this, if not in the physical world, in the virtual world, where disparate minds can meet and make meaning or, you know, create, uh, create the, the, you know, the, the, ter- the conditions for their, their own souls to, to, um, to flourish. So I'm committed to it. Uh, and I'm not afraid of that word, commitment. I'm committed to, to doing this, but I'm not necessarily committed to any one form or channel or, or what have you. I think Cosmos Cafe has been a, a valuable place. And I think that I, I show up every week and my commitment, of, for the time being at least, is to keep showing up, whether there's a topic or not. But if there isn't a topic, then that's an opportunity for anyone who is paying attention to bring something forth. Uh, it's an opening. And so I'm okay just having, providing an opening. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I can't come up with a new topic every week because I have to finish my poem. <laughs> and uh, that's my highest priority uh, right now. Um, but I can't let go, I can't let everything else fall, by, you know, fall away either. Even while I'm finishing my poem, I want to keep the cafe going. I want to keep the readers groups going, the journal going. I want to spend time with my family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm doing it. I'm finding my way. You don't have to worry about that. But we do have to have some, I think, um, coordination and consensus just around what's going to happen week to week. And if it's nothing and we're just going to show up, then we know it's at this Zoom link. It's at 12 o'clock Mountain Time. And, you know, be there or be square. Um, that's all I have to say. Wouldn't it be great if somebody just danced into the cafe and, and with whatever was on their mind Mm -hmm. and then we kicked it around? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think that's what we're doing now, aren't we? Well, we we are. Yes, John, I agree. We are in a sense. And, And sometimes people dance in with others on their hands. You know, John danced in with Lisa, for example. He, John danced in with Lynn Clare. Whoa, know, so, that was actually Lisa. Right? Well, right. see, all of a sudden you had a dosy doan around, and you know, which is which is even which is even better. And and I take those, I take those as very serious examples of the potential that's here. And and some people are are better at that than others. I was really happy to hear that Jeffrey said he had a few people he would like to. <laughs> cajole into showing up well he should you know he he should know that he has a place to do that i love the fact that he said i wanted to read aaron manning's book he created the space to do that he got people people showed up they showed up and they do that that those are those are extremely positive indications of what's going on john has a work off you know off cafe workshop this is just a place where we can you know banter and, and share results and, and kick things around to bring them up. But, but it is possible. People do just show up. You know, uh, Jordan Brown was not scheduled in that sense. He, he showed up. It was, it was, was a good, showing up. You know, it's a good showing up that things like that happen. I, I see that, you know, uh, J.F. Martel's going to get, he's getting closer to showing up. Because, you know, the Weird Series podcasts are, you know, kicking a lot of things up. There's, there, it's only a matter of time, though, he comes here and, and, and we can interact directly in, in, with something that he's doing. We already did that with iMother. Did you see that? No, we, I mean right here in the cafe. Yeah. You, 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 but you see, you can do it there, but you can also bring it here. Right. Because I'm sure that there are different people lurking. See, I, I love lurkers myself because they're knock-on effects that you have no idea about. You know, I think they're a positive force in the universe. But so if you do that there, you may somebody may watch that and may not. There's other people who will just go, I wonder what those weirdos are doing this week. You know, and then they, they see that here because that happens to be where they're there. They're people are, you know, 
Mark mentioned this at the beginning. We're creatures of habit. We tend to do a lot of things just out of routine for the sake of simplicity. So if I always check, if I always check what's going on in that cafe, that's where I check. I don't necessarily check everything else because the title itself may or may not say something to me. The title mother is so far reaching. It could be anything that there's something very specific behind that. That was a good one. Yeah. But, but you see, there's something very specific there, not something general. Well, not everybody's going to see that or recognize. But it took about a month to plan that, didn't it, Marco? Well, it, it, some yeah. events are really complicated. And then it, then it got canceled and then it rescheduled, and it right. took effort to make it's that still, happen. It's still in progress, actually. Uh, because right, it's Bridget probably, has yeah. That she I can't wrote. imagine it's done. And yeah. I, have an, I got an intern, uh, a form, uh, former babysitter mm-hmm. uh, of my girls. She's in college now, and she's an art student. Uh, and she's very interested. Uh, so she's helping out with finding artwork and images for the Mother series. But it, it's... Where's that? I really like how, how that's... Where's the Mother series? Uh, it's not yet published. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I, I might have something to say about that. Well, I think you should watch the movie and you could have do a podcast with Bridget and me. Well, I, have to watch the the, I, yeah, I watched the conversation on the movie. Can't you have to watch the movie <laughs> if to do the to do the comp, the podcast. I'm trying. You know, okay, I'll give it another try. Well, you found that, so you can find the movie. It's real nearby. <laughs> no, I just I too. But, you know, it just like it's, you, a, it's, a case, uh, it's a case study though, because it started with a germ of an idea. I saw the film. I wanted to talk about it. It disturbed me. It disturbed my thinking. It, it made me want to think about something. But I wanted to do that with others. So I put it out there. I said, who wants to see this movie and talk about it? A few people responded. We started, you know, it, I thought, tr- tried to think about, all right, how, how do we orchestrate this? And I thought, well, it's, about, it's a lot about uh, masculine, feminine. It's about the earth and, you know, religion, various themes. What based on who's shown up, how what what would maybe produce an interesting conversation? How might we kind of do things? I was improvising. I was seeing possibilities. Yeah. And even on the even on the day of, um, it was. I think you had scheduled me, uh, JF, and who else? There was someone else, and then Car- um, Caroline. Caroline. Mm-hmm. And then on the day of, Jeffrey asked because he was available. Can I join? And I said, sure. And then you came in. You had been sick the previous weekend, and so you had had to cancel the event with Bridget and with somebody else. I think Jeffrey might have been joining us then, so oh, okay. that's part of why he showed up. Yeah. So there were five of us, and we all sort of – we just improv around the theme of this film. And then Bridget's paper is coming out based mm-hmm. on – her mythological reading of this film. So I think the paper and the conversation, uh, I think they all cross, cross fertilize. And I think that's happening too in the, in the writers underground and the, those who are participating in that uh, are also all, all of us, I think are participating in the Aaron Manning reading. So I think that the Aaron Manning reading and what's happening in the writers underground, there's some, cross fertilization happening so and with these and a lot of those events have emerged out of conversations that started here certain themes that we've come back to we've actually done a great deal of reading here and very i think very eclectic kind of reading and and i'm just wondering with all of that marco i'm going to ask you this you talked about our tradition and you talked about culture and i do believe i'm quoting you correctly that did you say recreate a tradition you wanted to re or was that yeah uh, it's just an idea i'm playing with yeah now now we have about a year and a half we've done the about nine months i think of the cafe and about a, a year before that we were did several readings together the gebser and the Schlatter Dyke, and we've done some workshops. So with all of that, is there anything about, else about our tradition? 
Well, it's uh, one. It's open for for sure. Uh, um, I think it's really potent. <laughs> I think it's really beautiful. I mean, I think that we're as curators, um, cultural curators, in terms of where we find things that are, you know, these hidden gems, these um, you know authors that not many people are paying attention to. Um, but who have a lot to, I think, offer, uh, a lot to say about our, about our, our world, our condition. Um, I think we're finding them. I think they're, they're kind of being drawn into, into this space. I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, we talk, another bleed through from weird studies in JF is, uh, the movie Stalker and the idea of a zone. I think we're creating a zone. Uh, I really actually feel that happening. I feel like I'm in it. Uh, mm -hmm. where the way that meaning is unfolding is kind of shifting and it's weird and things are happening, serendipities, all, all of the qualities and features and uh, of that kind of zone space, um, I think are being activated uh, here. And it's, it's not a physically delimited space. It's not even necessarily a socially delimited space. It has kind of those fuzzy boundaries. It's real it's virtual i mean it, it it's um it's it's like a vortex uh and i have to be careful myself because uh you know i i really can get sucked into my own vortices uh sometimes when i'm writing or when i'm on a particular idea or it's three in the morning or what have you uh you know i i i go in other places just like you report doing um i do that in my own way and it's important for me to do that but it has to i mean it has to then come back in some way and reintegrate right and that that's part of i think uh, our conversation here one of the themes has been the integration piece because we can become very ambitious i know that i, I see a book that i uh, is attractive to me and i want to read it you know it's it's there's an erotic <laughs> attract you know a process that that is occurring and it's books are very sexy. Yes, <laughs> they are. Um, I love to open up a why. book and smell the crack. You know, mm, <laughs> it smells so good. <laughs> well, it's why I'm surrounded surrounded by them. But but they are you know, always a temptation, and and I have to you know when I have to train the myself in a way. Bibliophiliac. So when yeah. you say you go into the vortex, that's a skill and an ability you have, and also. I think we all have to come out of the vortex as well. So I think we, I love the, uh, that we are cur cultural curators. And you said um, it's fuzzy and real and virtual and a vortex. And that idea of being in the zone has become a very compelling metaphor, along with, I think, the other metaphors we've used, mm -hmm. um, like the garden and all that. So mm -hmm. that's what, so what I find interesting is, now we can talk about our tradition and we couldn't do that a year ago mm -hmm. but now we can a year ago we made a talk about what we would like our tradition to be if we had one but now we can and now we can claim that we already have one mm -hmm. and it's continuing to develop mm -hmm. and i think it's quirky and it's weird and it has the, the qualities and attributes that you described, and I'm sure each of us could describe in our own ways. So I just think we should just continue to, to do this, do more of it, do it better. I think we can um, make interesting things happen. So thank you very much for sharing all of that. I, I also want to do that genius thing, that theme mm -hmm. of genius, the collective genius, uh, I think there was a chapter in Irreducible Mind devoted to genius. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I know we've, that flickered on and off a little bit, but I think it's something that would be very complementary with as we go into Aurobindo. Um, and I'm very interested in this, this post-rational, uh, you know, futures that, that I think Aurobindo was zapping into as, as well as many of the other integral thinkers we were sort of playing around with. So I, I hope we can, I hope we can flesh that out. And as I was walking down the street today, I saw, I was thinking about uh, 
the That's Janus. A song. Yeah, this you know the Janus faced. Uh, Janus could look was the god who could look into the past and the future at the same time, and I think we are inheriting that uh, capacity. And I I was just thinking about this about pre trans post para you know all those prefixes and i saw this guy with a t-shirt it said create the past and uh in Erin manning we were talking about she talks about remembering the future so i think that's what's happening in these zones is we create or recreate the past and we start to remember multiple futures and then we ha we come out of that and we have a, a new way of uh, operating perhaps set up and functioning more effectively in the circumstances that, that we're in. So I, I think that's something that I hope we can um, explore more of. And we've already started to do it when we did those maps of time, <clears throat> doing sort of a micro level uh, exploration of time. I think that uh, Anyway, that's my, my, my story of the day because I felt that, oh yeah, it is about creating the past and recreating the past. We're free to do that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's what you bring into the present. Uh, it becomes the past that you create. And so what we bring into it, into this, or into what, you know, whatever our personal contexts are, that creates our... I, I, like, I, I, I like that, but uh, I do have one question. Uh, so what are we going to talk about next week? <laughs> did you, um, Ed, did you see that? Um, Jeffrey shared that video on that. Uh, I know we're all sick of quantum physics, but he, he had this Rovelli, Rovelli guy. Rovelli, yeah. Yeah. And he was, I thought that was fascinating. Yeah, it was that, was, that, was, that was a really. It, it, it interested me too, because Jeffrey made connections between yeah. Rovelli and the, that, uh, time maps of time yeah. conversation that we generated here in the cafe and that Jeffrey had seen that our conversation and had seen that Rovelli's uh, demonstration and made that connection mm -hmm. seemed to me very relevant uh, that we may want to revisit um, the themes that were opened up in that cafe and do some coordination with Rovelli's video uh, I think it was a very compelling lecture, and and I am sort of sick of quantum esoterica, but I found this this particular one pretty interesting. It was so, interesting because it wasn't esoteric. Yeah, it was pretty. But when you look at it, but when you look at it, you go, but that's all the weird shit that all these other people have been talking about. You know, right, and right. That's, it's that connection. All of a sudden, you go, well, the esoteric is actually the real part of it. Not now. So so, what do you do with that? That that's what I that's what I attracted me to that because oh know, good as oh, I, good. I said in his in, in you know my response this whole idea about time and space disappearing has a lot to do with being free of things that aren't tying you down anymore right it's another way so, I think of looking at, you know how Gates are thinks so, about it. so so maybe maybe Ed if 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 you're a, and maybe you guys we we did serendipity we did maps of time and then we could do this. And we could review some of that. We did Eric Weiss, didn't we? Eric Weiss wrote yeah, something on synchronicity, and we read that together. And um, we did Curavan, I think, um, and her holographic model. I think that with this Ravelli bringing that in, and maybe Jeffrey could join us. I think we could maybe do that next. I think that would be we'd have enough time to do it. It's just a video, really. And we are. I don't know. That's a, that's a suggestion. Or maybe if you want to do the Haraway book, that's okay too. But I just, you know, I just think that's it's a really big commitment to make right now, right before the the Sri Aurobindo starts. Yeah. Eric, Eric Weiss is that the uh, past lives reincarnation? Yes. He and, did write that book. And you guys had a conversation about that in the cafe. We did an es we did an essay of his on. Uh, Synchronicity. 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 My stepdaughter sent me that book years and years ago, and I read it. You did? I wrote, yes. I, read a, I wrote a fictional... Uh, I entertain anything. Uh, 
I'm, I think it's, I'm a, it's all, a good read. I'm all, yeah. I it's mean, good every, everybody, anybody who puts together a book and, and uh, but yeah, I considered it. And, you know, so I was just wondering, I hadn't heard it. So yeah, reincarnation. And back to uh, Infinite Jest, David Wallace mentions the fight. And back to Mother, that Wallace says in the book that you marry the woman who was your mother who killed you, something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fascinating. You know, this stuff is fascinating. And yeah, this is the place where we can talk about it, right? Yeah, that's that's a great book. Back actually, he talks a lot about Whitehead and Aurobindo. He brings them together in that book, um, and he thinks they complement one another. Process philosophy and well, and, yeah, I have it right there in a bookshelf from my stepdaughter, and uh, who's who's ghosted me. Mm -hmm. Oh. All, right, all, right, all right, let's come back. Uh, we're at the top of the hour. Yes. Doug, you had your hand raised. I just wanted to say I agree with the Ravelli focus. I think we should do that. And going off of our kind of post-integral or post-formal study or kind of integrating many different. So I, I feel like that can be our core focus. And if we want to bring in Donna Haraway's introduction, if we want to bring in other ideas, um, bring that in yourself or post it in the forum. Um, I, I can put up the page, not necessarily today, but I'll, I'll make that my task to do tomorrow. Well, what, if we, what if we do tomorrow. Donna Haraway as, a, as an underground read? We can maybe talk about that at a, another time, perhaps. But then I have to go into that classroom. I like the idea, I like the idea Marco, I like the idea Marco had of a menu where these these I don't know uh, subjects there's a menu you come into the cafe and you can order off the menu and then be directed to like Brian Weiss okay Reincarnation. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, it's that not Brian Eric. Weiss. It's Eric Weiss. Eric Weiss. Oh. Brian. A Brian, Brian's a whole different book. I, I, I got, didn't get that either, but he's, he's also somebody we should probably take a look at. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's what I mean by menu. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come oh, yeah. to cafe. And yeah, that's, the, that's the other Weiss. Yeah. They, so both, they both write on re reincarnation. Yeah, both but, of, yeah. Brian's the one at uh, UVA. It does yeah. The, uh, well, yeah. I, I think I mean the, men, the the menu metaphor works obviously with the idea of a of a cafe, and yeah. I I think that it's a good way of organizing topics uh, yes. where you might have a, a web page, for example, or a, a overview post on the forum that has the the menu items, and those would take you to the the talks that we did that you know fall under that menu item. It could also be that the menu provides a set of uh, placeholders for topics that are kind of um, ongoing in a way, like time and space. We're always talking about time and space in, in, in one way or another, and we, we, we look at it or we come at it through different angles, different thinkers. Now it's Cavelli, previously it was Jude Caravan or uh, Michael Garfield or, or whomever, but it's sort of a menu item, and uh, it becomes Six something we could buy. Right, whatever, and some it becomes something you can you can go to as um, uh, an option uh, for what you would pick up on in in a, in a discussion, and and even if it wasn't this group here, if there were other you know people who got involved and they were you know wanting to have their own conversations that are kind of in the same universe, they could have a menu to refer to, mm. a template, if you will, on how to host a conversation like this, set up the Zoom channel, post the recording, whatever it would be, and they'd have a starting place because it would be the tradition. It would be our, the, the culture that we've created. It would become the set of, John's called them, dynamic reference points that you can use to orient yourself in a shared space. So um, I, 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 I'm open to doing any of those topics. Uh, 
with with Jeffrey um, or with the guests that he has in mind or with whomever you know any, anyone here would would have in mind. I do still want to read Donna Haraway. Um, I do too. I, I do too. I love that but, book. I do too. I'm with you on that. But but as far as logistically, if if we're doing evening sessions, which are going to be about Aurobindo for a while, then there wouldn't Ooh. for me there wouldn't be a lot of extra time uh, during it's the week. Too much, That's right? It's too much. But, but if there would be no objection, I would propose that if we don't have another topic, if Jeffrey can't make it next week or if mm-hmm. there's nothing scheduled, that mm-hmm. we have something as a backup at least. Uh, and we could take one chapter at a time, for example. I could look at that. Uh, and that could be in, in any number of ways. Uh, somebody could lead it, for example. If you let it, John, you could propose we do a kind of exercise or a clean language art making uh alternative way of you know knowing kind of approach to it doug she, she does I, a lot of that yeah right so we could uh, it wouldn't I mean, be hard to find the she, idea though would be that the, the, it could be led by somebody who yeah. could bring an approach mm-hmm. to it something distinct like what ed would do would be distinct from what doug would do would be distinct from what i would do but it's it, somebody's driving the bus in other words right uh and we, we need to put a new new carburetor in that bus. <laughs> <laughs> it needs a tailpipe too. <laughs> what, what about I saw that picture; it was really depressing. <laughs> these that, that's from Chernobyl, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that that's in the exclusion zone. It's called the exclusion zone. Oh uh, wow! Green. These uh, cafes happen on Tuesday. What if, like, thir- Thursday was a deadline? This goes yeah. to structure, which you like, John. If Thursday... Well, I don't have time if we don't do it. By right. Thursday, if I have people, no time to do it. If people introduced anyone, anyone, anywhere, because it's planetary, uh, okay, this is the subject. And, and uh, I, I kind of like that format, Marco. Uh, and I just jumped into it when you said, hey, Mark, you do it. Okay, here's the topic, and here's the C questions. But that's Thursday. So just, yeah, we that's- check into the site, and uh, at, at some point, this is just, it would be not, there should be a little thing there make this your home page you know because a lot of this shit just go i don't even do we do we have a monthly calendar where we just have all the events scheduled there there you go yeah i would love that because i i I forget things until sometimes doug is kind enough to post a notice that we're doing something tonight but all right, I, 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 I have an action item. I, I am adding this to my to-do list. Uh, I, I created shared folders for the Writers Underground. I'm going to create a shared Thank you. Calendar. I got that. That, that okay. helped. I found Great. everything. So I, I am going to create a shared calendar. I will share that so that the, I, you know, all the events are in one place and, um, and we can see what's coming up. I like the Thursday deadline as well. I think that if there's no topic by Thursday, then... I want to fall back, though. Yeah. Uh, and, you know. Well, well I can tell we're you We're all something. kind of verbose. We are not. No. <laughs> well, Let me say not. something here. Hold on a minute. Let me say something. Yeah. I, 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 know. I resemble that remark. <laughs> but but we, we, we did we kind like of try it. the deadline thing before. So, I mean, that it, it works out as long as we hold up to it. But the past maybe four or five uh, cafes we've had here are because we kind of stopped that. Well, by Thursday, we didn't have anything, but we're still saying, Oh, what about this? So we're kind of up in the air. So as long as we can hold on to that, that's great. But then well, of course things change and fall well, apart, well, go well, back in the compost pile. Doug, you're here and you do a lot of the organizing for the last couple of, uh, cafes. Um, and I loved your poem. So, 
will you be doing the Ravelli with I, uh, I mean, we have to, what do we have to do to make this happen? We have to talk to Jeffrey. So right? with, See well, if he wants to be here. I can just simply put up a quick page or if any of you can do it before I get to it, that's great. We can also make it a wiki page, which maybe Marco or I can help you figure out, but anyone can edit it at any time that's part of a certain group or maybe part of the cafe group. Um, so if you have the power to edit it, um, like the seed questions, you can add in seed questions. If you don't necessarily like a picture or if you feel like somebody missed something, you add something in, um, maybe talk with them before you mess around with their, their page or whatever. But um, I, I mentioned earlier, I will put together something by the end of the day tomorrow, which is Wednesday, right? Or Oh, morning <laughs> for you thursday ed so it'll still meet the deadline but i'll put together something it might not be the greatest thing because i have job family and all that and as right. i mentioned no internet yeah. at home so um i'll put together something and you guys add on to it How about that? It, it would be at great to have, this week it'd be great to have jeffrey here because he has a background and he he knows the guy he's the one who presented it so i mean he's the one who posted the video so it'd be great if jeffrey could come and if we could just let him know that we want to do this, um, maybe, and if he can't come, maybe next Tuesday, or maybe he can do it the following Tuesday. And I could be, uh, I would volunteer to do a Haraway event to do the intro, because she does a lot on narrative. And she has a theory of narrative. I think she outlines it maybe in that first chapter. And um, she's really against the, the uh, sort of male myth uh, uh, of the hero's journey. She has a kind of feminist critique of that. So I could uh, make a few, orient a conversation around that. If you want me to, I think I would be glad to do that. But if y'all think that would be useful. Well, from a process perspective, I would just want to know, um, yes, one one yes, John. Uh, okay. I w so that's I a possibility. I could do that if this doesn't come off. Right. I could do that by next Tuesday if I have the wherewithal right now to think about it. Okay. So as a backup. But, go, but going forward, week by week to week, when Thursday comes, let's say Thursday end of day, in you know whatever time zone, but more or less end of day. If there is not a topic that is chosen for the next week, what happens? What if, this is just what if, the cafe, Zoom, whatever, was available by, twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday, like your corner bar? We can't, wait, wait, we, we can't, we don't, we, we, we can't get the process down for, for once a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but we <laughs> have plenty, everybody just like, you know, spews out all this stuff. No, 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 no. So, so Thursday comes. What okay. happened? What ha on Friday morning, I don't want to be thinking about what, I don't, I don't want to be talking about the cafe. I, I, want, to, I, I want to have a weekend where I'm not think, thinking logistics for the cafe. I want to I'm know what you're working happening. on. Yeah. I, I want to be either working on something. Yeah, exactly. I want to be working I want on to read something. It. Right. I want to be pre preparing for the cafe, not talking about what the topic is going to be on Monday. You know, that's right. a waste of time. Right. So, well, so that's yeah, why. I mean, I'm pro I'm proposing this. If, if we have this as a backup. Yes. Okay. That's all I understand. I'm interested in it. The chapters are. Re I could e I could easily read. I know that I could read the 30 pages or whatever it is between Thursday and Tuesday. I could do that. Uh, I think any of us can. Uh, but if Jeffrey or jo anybody else has something they want to bring up, bring in, please do. I may not do it. I, you know, I'm, I may not bring a, a topic. I don't, I don't want to take that on. Uh, so, but I do want to be present and, 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 and I, and I, and I like open conversations, um, but I think we should even schedule those. So if we're going to have an open conversation, I know that that's what's going to be coming. And I'll orient myself towards it. Uh, 
so I like that idea too. Mm -hmm. So then, are we then in agreement on a plan? No. no. I I just posted the rethinking time, take it or leave it cafe page. Anyone that wants to edit, edit, add, do it, then you can. If we want to scrap the idea, then go ahead. But there it is. I've got to go. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Yeah. I just see everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Mark. If you want to use the, the Zoom no, link, I and just have like an open come hang out with me. I uh, I, I, set. I just want to uh, suggest: is it a cafe where people meet? You know, like a corner bar, or is it a classroom with scheduled? Uh, what's it called? A syllabus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, neither. Yeah, I'm, I'm back to my, may I? I'm back to my stamtisch. Somebody shows up on Thursday and goes, I had this really great idea, and when we meet on Tuesday, we're going to talk about it. End of story. I'm, I'm bringing it. You know. You, you've been served notice. When we show up, this is what we're going to talk about. And this is how. So that's kind of in between yeah. the corner bar and the classroom. Right. See, because you're coming from an American standpoint, place where you hang out, and I'm coming from a German one where there's people that meet whether they have a topic or don't have a topic like we do. And if they do have one, then they have one. And the thing that I like about what's just been bantered about here is there are a couple of options. Jeffrey, I think it would be nice to have him back again for a discussion, especially if Rovelli is involved but maybe he can't make it on Tuesday. That's oh. a possibility. So we're just in a little, we're just in a little tree diagram where I come down and I have an order link and I go, okay, I can go this way or that way. So if he can't be there, we always have this fallback and the fallback happens to be Haraway. Right. John says, well, I can pick up the slack on the first one right there. No problem. If that's what it is. So we ask one when he answers no, then John either kicks in or he does. Or and if so someone else we, wants to do it, that's fine exactly. too. But, you know, and but I'll be glad ones, to yes, and for other chapters, other people, I believe, should I'll you know I'll I'll pick up one, and say okay, well I'll kind of organize that, and it might be the fallback, and I might do it next week, and it might be four weeks from now. I don't know. That that part doesn't bother me, because if if we have not, I believe that everyone who thinks that they can bring someone to the cafe. Steve Rosen, for example, Jeffrey mentioned a couple of people. I think they should find out from these people, when can you show up and schedule them? This is why a calendar would be nice. Then you know where the holes are. And then you can say, okay, well, this week I came across this. Maybe we could talk about that. Or maybe nobody comes up with something and it is open and it's left as open. But we can fill in the opens with closed, if you will, and if nobody comes up with anything until we're through airway, the default is somebody picks up the slack. Now, what it means is that all of us who agree to that procedure have to fess up. John says, okay, I'll do the introduction. All right, that part's taken. So, Mark, you can't say, well, I would have loved to have done the introduction. It's already gone because <laughs> John picked it up. And somebody else can volunteer and say, I'll pick up chapter three. I'll pick up chapter four whenever it may be, and it gets filled in. And so it is the fallback for that week unless something else comes, and if not, it just gets moved back in the schedule, and we fill in the blanks as we go along. But, I don't well, think we get more open and flexible than that with have, with, <laughs> and still have a plan. Well, it's almost like the owner of a cafe yeah. who uh, he books – yeah, entertainment like Marco said, open mic, and but he's got his uh, he's got to meet his financial obligations, so he's got to have somebody booked. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't have somebody booked, it's open mic. <laughs> right, that's exactly the case. And what we've all just volunteered to do is open mic for him when nothing else is going on. <laughs> Until we're through halfway, and then somebody else show, shows up, and we, you know, which is an interesting format. You might be able to do this with something else as well. And, and also, if you, want if, to. You can, 
you can also have an open on occasion you can plan to have an open frame yeah where you don't have any that your plan is you have no plan for that day yeah we're taking a break this weekend we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna chat and maybe it's just right. reflect on how how well it's been going up to this. Exactly. No, exactly. We'll probably no, be well done. No, oh, and we can, no and have cover, a, but good music. For example, could be too. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I, I'd like to, I, I, all right. So I'd like to get going, but I do want to say this: that this is for this time period. This is a particular slice of time. Oh. It's a weekly ritual. That's how I'm relating to it. I'm going to show up, yeah. We, you know, week in, week out. Maybe I won't. Some weeks I'll have some, something going on. That's my commitment for now, mm-hmm. until it's not anymore. Um, right. But it's for all of us. It's an open-ended commitment. I don't think we're getting married here. It's yeah. not a dysfunctional family. If I don't show up, right. I know you guys are going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, if if this weren't happening now, our energies would be going someplace else, and I'm sure yes, those, would be, you know, right. good for us in whatever ways and a benefit. I trust that. I want to say that if somebody wants to do something at another time, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have the Zoom. Yes. You know, we're paying for it. It's not being used 24-7. It's mostly available. So let's say there's something you want to do. John has already done this. Yes. Um, Jeffrey has done this with the minor gesture. Yes. Uh, you can do it. We, we have the, the technology. We have the means. We have, the, the I think, the will. I'm here to help facilitate that. I would like to make it more easy, more easy for people just to self-serve on that. I'd like to be less required, but that's going to take some time and that's, uh, that's fine. I understand that that's going to be a process. Um, but I want to make sure that that's communicated, that if, if you want to do something, uh, you know, you can do it. And um, that's the purpose. That's what the platform is here for. <laughs> Right now, th- th- we have to do this very consciously. Mm-hmm. Eventually, we'll be so seasoned at doing this, it'll become unconscious behavior. We'll just know what the procedure is, and it'll, we'll set it in motion. But I think it's a little clunky now. But as soon as I get a tutorial and you can walk me through this, I'm sure I can do this. But I'm just, I just don't want to delete something accidentally. It'd be terrible to, to have a meeting and I push the wrong button and the whole thing is deleted. I have a fear of that. So that's why I'm like not volunteering actively. Yeah. So just to yeah, let you know, I, I want to be sure I know what the procedure is and it's very clear so that I don't screw up something. I know that that almost happened a couple of times. You, you mentioned that. So, yeah. And I, um, it's not that I don't want to do it. I just don't have the kind of technical expertise. It's, yet. it's, it's, yeah. And it's not, it's not the most user friendly thing. Uh, yeah. Doing the, the Zoom and posting the recording, it's, it's not. It's not as easy as Facebook. I wish it was. That's mm. my, what I envy about Facebook is that it makes it easy to do things like this. Um, so we have to kind of re, you know, rebuild the wheel, recreate the wheel uh, mm. a little bit. But I think we could, could build a better wheel with time and with... Um, Zuckerberg you know, is a billionaire. Right. Not because he did anything. <laughs> Right, but that that's another conversation. And right, the dating um, side. That's kind of the thing that Caroline, that Caroline and, and I were really working on and, and dreaming is what's that kind of bigger system that right. would allow for the kinds of regenerative interactions that, you know, that I think couldn't happen on Facebook. They do happen there, but then they're immediately like, you know, colonized and uh, sort of sucked into the, into the, into the, the particular dystopia um how could we do that how could we do that how can we create a space that serves people in the way that facebook does but without the crap Mm -hmm. um anyway that's another conversation uh and it's also something that you know caroline that that could be another kind of fallback we have uh, eventually when we get get through staying with the trouble and maybe metamodernism, whatever else comes up, it could be, uh, you know, Caroline's key docs, because that's something that, you know, she's been in a, a major process of, of bringing forth. Uh, Wait, which needs attention. Caroline's to what? What's Sorry. This, she, she, she's been writing a, vis- a visionary document for a kind of next generation 
social media ecosystem uh, that would be um, oriented towards people's self-actualization, uh, fundamentally oriented towards, towards people's self-actualization and towards the kind of regenerative ecosystems of practice that Donna Haraway talks about in her book and drawing on a lot of other sources as well. But, uh, you know, that's a major work, actually. And, um, you know, it's coming, th coming through in chunks and pieces and fits and starts. And it's partly dependent on our whole ecosystem here and what, you know, we could sustain and what we can give attention to. So, um, you know, it, I know that that's, you know, that itself has been a, a, a t uh, um, kind of trouble point in a way because bringing a big vision like that into a space this is another conversation I'm getting into, but just to bleed over, where there's a lot of concrete things happening between the individuals who show up, I think, is tricky. And so, how that gets integrated, how this all becomes something beyond, like you said earlier, if I were to disappear, it would be gone. I, I want to transcend that. I want this to be distributed systematically. And so... Um, that's a lot of the, the things that come through the work with Caroline. And um, I think can be, this could be a forum where we explore some of those themes, uh, you know, as, as she's ready to and as, um, as the, the space seems ripe for it. You mean this, when you say this forum? The, the cafe, yeah. The cafe. Mm -hmm. And that's, and, and I'll never, uh, well, you're going to have to re- you're going to have to do a lobotomy or something on me. Cafe okay. Me. <laughs> <laughs> we have an ice pick in my volunteer. <laughs> you, you put it right there, right? Just go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> then all your problems hey, are solved. <laughs> that's a, thanks, John. A lot of I'm just teasing you. Line up behind you. Well, I'm uh, just teasing you, Mark. After I that know, verbose remark I you know. made. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I like about the cafe. That it's right. casual. It is casual. But sometimes you want to bring a tuxedo, you, you're free to do that. Yes. You can overdress on occasion if you want. You can never, my father told me, you can never be overdressed. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you guys. All Very right, enjoyable. I'll see y'all guys next time. Bye-bye.